so the Miami Dolphins have a yeah they have an odd team structure and when I say this I'm talking about the offense now we all know that the Dolphins took Jalen Waddle who was this year's speed guy and I know you guys are going to be like He's actually a decent route runner in the whole nine yards. Well, unfortunately, a majority of people who know about Waddle only know him for his speed. And something I need to say in these videos are I make these videos with a mix of my opinion and the average, you know, the perspective of your average football watcher. So n everyone's not going to know, you know, that he did this, this and this in college. They just know Alabama national championship. He was fast. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But anyways. The reason why I say the Dolphins offense is oddly built is because of the wide receiver core. The the core is something we put together at Madden. It's it's literally a speed team. It's literally a track team, you know. And why do I think this is odd is because in theory we look we can look at this from two average perspectives. Perspective A is you have all these fast receivers, throw it deep, run four verts. They can't they can't keep up with everyone. If you got four guys on a field that run four two, I, I'm willing to bet that they the defense does not have four guys that run four two. Um, and then there are the guys who are like Tua can't throw the deep ball, which is a very odd analysis. But for the sake of argument, Tua can't throw the deep ball, so just be the 2019 Saints. And in theory, it works because well. You know, in theory, these dudes are fast, so they should get yards after catch because they either outrun people or they shed attack because they're so quick, you know? Especially Jalen Waddle. I hear he's a little elusive. And as a Dolphins fan or an average viewer, you're probably like, I don't see what's odd about this. You have the option to go deep and you have the option to be the 2019 Saints and throw slants and drags all day. Slants, drags, and crossers with these fast-ass receivers. And the reason that we'll... we'll we'll get into that later okay but it sounds like a great offensive structure so far it's probably what you're thinking and well this is the point where you guys start hitting the dislike button this is when you guys start clicking off the video because i have to tell you the truth all right now i was watching the unfiltered sports podcast and the co-host of that podcast ranked miami as the fifth best receiving core in the league he ranked y'all over uh who did he rank y'all over he ranked all over the Browns. He ranked y'all. He didn't put the Chiefs in there because he didn't factor in tight end. So he ranked y'all over the Chiefs. He ranked y'all over, you know, top five. So, yo, yeah. <laughs> but in <clears throat> immediately when he put y'all in top five, I started hating. I started saying that is very optimistic. And all you got to do is play press, yada, yada, yada. And that's when it hit me. This team is built very odd because he did have some logical points behind rank, ranking y'all fifth. I just don't think that he should have like with his points, which his points were you have a bunch you have a bunch of names. You have Will Fuller, who's a good wide receiver. You have which I'll furthermore on that later. You have Jalen Waddle, furthermore on that later, and you have uh, Devontae Parker, furthermore on that later. And Albert Wilson, I also looked it up. Alan Hearns is on the team. So you have a lot of names, but we're going to get into why at face value, you're like, yeah, Will Fuller, Devontae Parker, Jalen Waddle, that's a great receiving core. But let me tell you the truth later. All right. So anyways, the team is built very odd because the main attraction of the Dolphins you know the Dolphins pass catchers are Will Fuller and Jalen Waddle, and if you're a Dolphins fan or a hardcore football binger, Devontae Parker is in there too. Well, like I said earlier, here's the problems I have. Who is the X? Who is the dominant receiver? Will Fuller is a great wide right receiver, and that franchise guy made a phenomenal comparison saying Will Fuller is literally Deshaun Jackson. Will Fuller is awesome. I love watching him play because he does all the cool things. He goes deep. He outruns people. He catches the ball when he's open deep, you know? He does that. But here's the number one issue with Will Fuller. Number one, he has an injury history. Now, I'm not an expert on injuries, but when I name, you know, when I hear the name Will Fuller, he's either caught two touchdowns or he's hurt. And my second problem with him is it's third and eight, and he's one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Ramsey. Hell, not only do I think he loses that matchup, but I don't even think the quarterback looks his way. 
Are you really trusting Will Fuller to have a good game against Jair Alexander? Are you really trusting Will Fuller to have a good game against Tredavious White? Albeit twice a year. I love Will Fuller. I love watching his highlights. I love fast guys. I love guys who go deep. It's cool. It's fun to watch. We love seeing the ball float in the air for 15, for you know, two and a half seconds, three and a half seconds, and then just come down to a wide open man, you know? We love that. But the thing is, he's he's just we'll get into that later. He's just a big play guy. I don't he's not an X. He's not a X. He's not a third and five. I need you to run an out route and make sure it's six yards and you have to beat this guy no matter who they put on you. It's third and eight. I need you to beat I don't know. I need you to beat Stephen Gilmore on a post route. Like he he's not that guy. Second of all, Jalen Waddle. Now, here's the hard part, because I'm really optimistic about Jalen Waddle. I'm always optimistic about speed guys, because eventually one of them is going to be great, right? Eventually, one of these speed guys taken in the first round will be at least half as good as Tyreek Hill, right? But we got to come down to earth. Waddle is going to need time to get up to speed and whatnot. He's going to need time to become what we think he is, a speedy, make you miss, decent route runner guy, right? Because, look. DK Metcalf, Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins, all those, you can name other guys, all balled out early. First year or two, balled out crazy. But all the speedsters over the last few years have had it kind of rough. John Ross, he's not even on the team he got drafted by. He's considered a bust. Hopefully he rebounds. I like John Ross. Uh, Jalen Rager was drafted early last year. He, you know, he's getting scrutinized. People are talking crap about him. It's taking him a second to adjust to the league and get his foot in the door. Henry Ruggs, I mean, he had some big plays, but so like it, he wasn't consistent. It's taking him a second to get consistent, you know, getting his groove. And the reason why, look, you know, as a gadget guy, Jalen Waddle would be great, you know, slant, hitch, fade guy. As a gadget guy, you know, throw him some jet sweeps, some pup passes, the little motion you know, toss passes, um, and slant hitch fade, I think he'll be good, he'll be good rookie year, nothing wrong with that, but expecting him to be the best or second best receiver on this team is extremely optimistic based on the current trends, it's, it's taking these guys a while to adjust to the NFL, and you, you could say that, which is what everybody was saying leading up to the draft, that Jalen Water was way better than Harry Ruggs, and they played on the same team. He's way better than Jalen Rager. He's way better than John Ross. And I think the thing, the problem with Jalen Rager and John Ross is not only because they were fast, but the thing is they played in conferences that didn't that doesn't really have really good defenses. So they were able to just outrun everybody when they couldn't beat them on a route. But anyways. Anyways, based on the current trends, it's going to take Jalen Waddle to, to, a minute to, you know, get up to speed and be who we think he is, right? So, and then there's Devontae Parker. Now, Devontae Parker is good. He's a little underrated. But, I don't really have, besides that, I don't really have that much of an opinion on him. I can't tell you he can't do this and he can do this. Besides the fact that, like, his stats fell off after 2019, his breakout year. And before that, it wasn't too good. And this year, it wasn't too good. But I do realize that last year, your QB situation was rather hectic and inconsistent. And before that, y'all didn't really have a quarterback. So, no real opinion on Devontae Parker. I know he's good. Or at least I know he can be good. I don't know if he's good or bad. I know he can be. But if I had to place bets, he's going to be the X wide receiver in this group. But then again... If it's third and eight and Jalen Ramsey is on him, are you even looking at Devontae Parker? You got to be, we got to think, we got to be realistic about this. And don't think I'm sleeping on the Jaseki guy. I just don't really have an educated opinion on tight ends. And my opinion is just, you know, tight ends are tight ends. You know, there's, it's like George Kittle, um, Travis Kelsey. And then everybody else, you know, the Darren Waller is cool, too. He's my favorite of the bunch, but, you know, anyways, um, but the, the the problem, the reason why I say this team is built rather oddly, besides the other points that I just gave you earlier, is this wide receiver core consists of a bunch of number two wide receivers. Now, you're probably like, oh, what? think about it. Look, Devontae Parker would be a legendary number two. 
let's say he's a number two like imagine Devontae Parker and DeAndre Hopkins Devontae Parker would go crazy imagine Devontae Parker and Julio Jones that would go crazy now let's see uh Jalen Waddle Jalen Waddle would be a phenomenal slot receiver slash deep threat number two imagine Jalen Waddle and Keenan Allen imagine Jalen Waddle and Devontae Adams and Will Fuller I mean, was he not a good number two with DeAndre Hopkins? I mean, that's pretty much how he made all his big plays. He just outran the number two, number three corners because he's so fast. That, like, and on a quick side note, I want to throw this in because I got curious and I wanted to do some research to defend what I just said because a lot of people, they don't, they'll try to attack you off of assumptions, you know? And the only thing worse than somebody who doesn't know anything trying to attack like your opinion is someone who knows a little bit of something but doesn't get the whole picture and tries to attack you off of it. So let's look at these stats, all right? This is me defending that uh, Will Fuller and Devontae Parker are number twos. I'm not going to say Jalen Waddle should be obvious because he's a rookie. It's going to take him a second to become who he is. Look at these stats. Now, Will Fuller is not a high catch guy. He's a big play dude. He gets like three to four catches a game and gets like 80 yards, 100 yards, or sometimes he'll get like 30. But, Devontae, this past year, I should pop up the stats of Will Fuller. You can pause and look at it. But, Devontae Parker, who I'm assuming is your ex, your number one receiver, your third and eight, I need a curl, I need an out, I need a post. Yeah, this past year, he was shut out at Kansas City. He got two, I think he got two targets, but I know for damn sure he didn't get zero recorded catches. Nothing. He had one catch for three yards. Well, he had one catch for a three-yard touchdown versus the Rams, who has that man I was talking about earlier. He had two catches for 30 yards versus the Chargers. And he also had two catches for versus the 49ers. Albeit he had 50 yards that time and a touchdown there too. And yeah, but yeah, your expected number one receiver has seven games of four catches or less. Now, in some of those games, he do be getting 30, 40 yards, but that's not good. You know, that's not good for your starting receiver, especially in, yeah, anyways. Um, but in comparison, let's, let's compare him to the top receivers in the league. Devontae Adams had one game with four catches or less. DeAndre Hopkins had two games with four catches or less. Now, to be fair, Mike Evans had more games with four catches or less than uh, Devontae Parker, but Mike Evans had a thousand yards last year and he got a ring. I know you're gonna say Tom Brady, save it. Justin Jefferson had seven games as well with four catches or less, but He's a rookie, and he's not the X receiver on his team. Well, he might be this year, but Adam Thielen's the X, you know. It, DK Metcalf had like six or seven, but that offense was weird. Anyways, but yeah, so those are good receivers that had seven or around seven. So you can, if you want to give me backlash for that, go ahead. But the truth is, he's not a dominant receiver. You know what I'm saying? He's not up there with the top ones as an X. I don't, you know, I'm not expecting him to play again. Anyways, but the point is your dominant top receivers consistently perform no matter what, no matter the situation. Now, in conclusion for you guys who stuck around, despite the reality and down to earth statements I just made, this offense is still dangerous because Jalen Ramsey can't cover everyone. You feel me? And is your second string, third string corner keeping up with Jalen Waddle for two plays and then running stride for stride with Jakeem Grant? Kind of a stretch. I don't think you are. But despite not having an X wide receiver, this core is still dangerous because you have two home run threats and an X thousand yard receiver and a breakout candidate at tight end. But here's the kicker, right? We just talked about the pros and cons of the uh, Dolphins wide receivers. Your offensive line kind of stinks, and you don't have a running game. I don't think y'all have had a running game since Jay Ajayi, and I don't even think he was that. I don't even think he was great. I just think he was good. You know, I was just like, holy, f we have a running back, and then you sent him to Denver. 
I don't know. He sent he was sent somewhere. Anyways, not only does that make y'all one dimensional, but it's gonna be inconsistent because you know yeah y'all ain't y'all they ain't gonna block for two you know what i'm saying one game y'all gonna go crazy because you're facing a team with no pass rush and you know you're gonna go crazy but then a week or two later ain't nothing gonna work because you're gonna face a team with a d-line because your foundation is bad but yeah we you know the dolphins are weird assuming all things work to plan you guys have a receiver core that compares to the kansas city chiefs but the problem is, who the hell is blocking for these guys? Who the hell is blocking for your running back? Who is blocking for Tua? And who's going to block long enough for, you know, Will Fuller and uh, Jalen Water to go deep? And I didn't mention Tua in this because I think Tua is fine. I think people are overreacting to his rookie season. And with that being said, um, if there's anything I missed out on this, do you, do you agree that the Dolphins' uh, receiving core is a little weird? I mean, it's kind of based off of Kansas City. It's a track team. Um, are you optimistic about it? Do you think Jalen Waddle is going to break out the gates? You know, it's not going to take him till week eight to find his stride. Do you think Do you think Will Fuller is going to put it all together and be more than just Deshaun Jackson catching two deep balls a game and getting shut out against a top-tier defender? Um, do you think Devontae Parker bounces back? Do you think the offensive line performs better than expected and this team goes crazy? Do you think the running back makes an appearance this year? I don't even know who your starting running back is. I don't even think it's worth looking it up. But yeah, this is getting long. Uh, this kind of why uh, in the Joe Burrow video I was talking a million miles a minute is because uh, I don't want to stretch these out because nobody clicks on a video that's 17 minutes long, nor does anybody stick around through the whole 17 minutes. But if you did, I'm nearly at 2,000 subscribers. That would be awesome. That would be a great milestone, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be posting more commentary videos talking about NFL things and music things. So, yeah, with that being said, if you know me, because we know we have next, sponsored by Atari. And... <laughs>